two, one. Look at that, episode 373 of Age of the Show. Traveling around the world. We've got a guy in LA, a guy in London, and a guy in Barcelona right now. Rodrigo, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. All right, do you want to tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure, Ali. Um, my name is um, Frederick Van Hyn, but I've been living abroad the last 12 years. I'm born and raised in Sweden. My parents are from Cambodia. The last 12 years I've lived abroad. So having a very Swedish name makes it complicated. So I made up <laughs> Freddy and uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it sticks with people. So I just call Freddy. myself Freddy with people, but cool. call me Frederick, I don't mind. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that's about me. I um, twelve years ago to? I started. Yeah. What have I What I've been up to? Been up to? <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> very easy. I've been grinding with absolute internship. Tr- keep growing my company. Been training jujitsu, trying to be better, getting closer to my black belt, and trying to enjoy life. Oh wow! Yeah. What's uh, What's more, What's more challenging, the jujitsu or the company? <laughs> Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> <Jiu-jitsu. laughs> yeah, man. You're, you're 100%. Tell, what are I mean, the important I, I, lessons that you, you think you're learning from Jiu Jitsu? What do you say, Said? Oh, sorry. I was saying, like, what do you think are the important lessons you're gaining from, from the practicing Jiu Jitsu? Number one, I think, is to always stay humble. There's always somebody who's going to be better than you, um, no matter size, no matter size or no matter gender. Um, I think a second lesson is to to have faith in the process and believe in in, uh, putting all your faith in patience, you know, because I think today, especially today, youngsters today want results like today, like they want the Ferrari right. today. They want the Louis Vuitton bag like this week. They want to have that T-shirt for that party this for this weekend. But I think what martial arts has taught me in Jiu-Jitsu is that I just need to show up. I don't have the best. I need to. I don't have to have the best training session. To be honest, like most of the training sessions, I'm so tired from work. I don't want to go. But I just need to show up, and then I just need to be that workhorse, and then the rest will take care of itself. You know. Oh, wow. And just the mentality of just showing up, right? Exactly. Exactly. You know, that's uh, like, um, it's really cool how, you know, ideas and philosophies from sports translate into business, right? Because I guess that idea of just showing up <laughs> is hugely important, I think, in um, business and entrepreneurship, right? Have you, has that helped you out in your uh, career and projects? Absolutely, Ali. I think with, yeah. with Absolute Internship, when we started, um, we didn't have any funding. You know what you see in the news? Like, yeah, that company got like a million or whatever. Like, <laughs> we never got like, n- there's no money for us, you know, like mm-hmm. nothing. We didn't seek any ma- money either. It was all self-funded. And the way I, I approached it was like, Let's go there. Let's try to get some students. Let's go to that university because, I don't know, according to Wikipedia, they have 15,000 students. I'm sure we can get 10 paying customers from there, you know? That's the way I approached it. And like, if if we don't get 10, we can at least get one. It's going to be worth our money, you know? So I think that's the way I approached it a lot. It was not like, okay, according to that market research, we need to go there. (laughs) It was like all like common sense, you know? Right. Right, like real practical stuff. That's so cool. Do you exactly. want to tell us? Do you want to tell us a bit more about absolute internships? Absolutely. So, a- absolute internship. Uh, we're one of the world's biggest internship programs for students. Um, think of it like going abroad to study, but instead mm-hmm. of studying, you're interning. Um, so that's what we're offering. So students, they look us up. Uh, when they want to get some work experience abroad, they can join us for a month, two months, three months. They get their visa, accommodation, internship guaranteed. And wow. so far, we're hosted over 5,000 students from all around the world. So, oh, Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I do. What kind I do. of industries do you usually uh, like in, work with? Well, we which serve, uh, companies or, or industries that you focus on? 
Yes, I, it's a good question. We, we serve over 22 industries. So anywhere from business to engineering to finance, public relations, but the most popular ones are definitely nonprofit, business and engineering. Oh, wow. Amazing. Um, I will say that um, <laughs> I've had many internships in the past and I've also been in school in the past, but I know definitely that working is much better experience than being in a classroom learning. That's for sure. <laughs> So if, I you're listening, if you're listening to this and you should definitely, and you're a student, definitely get an internship and get actual experience because when you graduate and you don't have any actual experience, you don't know what you're going to do, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So what I made you want... Right now with my master's, man, I'm just like, I'm like reconsidering this whole process. I'm just, and I'm still in the first semester. <laughs> but like, you know, say that's yeah. part of the process, man, you know, because you need that paper you know we live in this society today unfortunately where you need that paper that a4 paper that says you get a master you got a bachelor that says okay said you got your your degree now you're good to go now you know you're <laughs> legitimate and you just need to go through that process and you're gonna learn a lot but at the same time you're gonna learn so many life lessons along the along the side of that, you know. Like you're gonna, of course, learn all the theories or whatever you're studying, but at the same time, you're gonna acquire skills in patience, in discipline, uh, in networking because you're making friends from all around the world, uh, stepping out of your comfort zone. Like I don't know, speaking to some strangers, some other students you never thought of speaking to, you know. So there's a lot of added things that students today they're not thinking about whenever you sign up for something there are always some added benefits yeah i definitely wow. agree with you on that that there are skills other than for example the academic information you're gaining that you can attain in the university but i feel like most people don't really notice these opportunities for them and i feel i feel like that's the main issue it's like noticing an opportunity and taking it because a lot of people Basically, they just see all of these like events or clubs or groups uh, and people that they can interact with. And then they just out of fear, they don't take that opportunity to make to add a new skill set or a new person in their life that could basically benefit. them, Or maybe they just don't know how to notice these uh, these opportunities. You're making a really good point. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to university, I spoke to so my parents, they were uh, they worked in a factory like blue collar workers to work from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. in a metal factory in Sweden. So I couldn't go to them for like advice. OK, which school, which university should I go to? I was the first one to go to university and um, we're lucky enough because I was working in a restaurant and like part time over the weekend in high school. And I met this accountant and he told me that he said, Freddie, university, the reason why you go there is to meet people. That's the number one pur purpose. Mm -hmm. So he said, choose a school that is not too small and not too big, where you can be a big fish in a little lake. You don't want to be a big fish in the sea. You're just going <laughs> to be, there's going to be too much competition. You want to be a big fish in a small lake. So I chose a, a rather smaller university. And the way I approached this side was every gym session, I trained like five times per week. And this was before the iPhone, right? So I was always carrying a, um, a little paper and a pen in my gym shorts. And every, every time I met, I saw some guy, you know, were speaking English or something. I knew that they were international and I always wanted to go abroad, right? And build my global networks. So I would be like, hey, so where are you guys from? Start the small talk, whatever. And then I'll be like, hey, what's your MSN? So I would like write it down. Like, and then when I came out, when I went back home, I would like add them. Because I knew if I had everyone on my MSN, they would follow me forever. Like, okay, MSN doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> but I would be like, that's the way I expanded my network, you know. And I think that was one thing that I did, Said Another thing that I did is that a lot of people like to network and befriend people in their own, like, circle. In their own social class, their own, like, skin yeah. color, you know. I don't know. Asians with Asians or Swedish with Swedish, right? But I, I would never look at it that way because the way I thought was if I wanted to be like a, I don't know, a wise person, you know, or a successful person or a successful entrepreneur, 
man, if you always hang hung out with like Asians, <laughs> how are you be able, how are you gonna be able to sell stuff to like British people? Because you don't even know them, you know, or Spanish people. So I would make an effort to like, hey, that's like the the Arabs in the campus. Or let's go and talk to them, you know, like, and I will meet up with them when we played football. Or like, hey, these are the the African ones, and these are the more upper class one. Let's go and befriend them, to really learn social clues and I guess upper my my social skills, you know, which prepares you for life <laughs> afterwards. I think I had a funny nickname. Uh, I was called the Yellow Pages. You know, <laughs> skin color, but man, I knew everyone. If you needed somebody's phone number, like somebody, some girl on campus, I would have her MSN. You know, like I was your go-to person. Go to Freddie. Yeah, that's amazing. I love what you just said there about like you know befriending people of different cultures and backgrounds. Um, you know, for a business perspective too, right? To get to know all different kinds of people. But for me, it's also like. I think we're all very similar, all different kinds of people. We're all actually much more similar than you'd imagine. And you wouldn't know it, but you'd know it once you go and try to talk to people from different places and cultures and countries. And the more you learn from them, it's actually really cool. You <laughs> understand them more and then you become wiser and kinder and more accepting and tolerant of people. Yeah. 100% Ali, 100%. I, um, I have a little story. so where I grew up, we didn't have a lot of immigrants, you know, in, in the village or town where I grew up, there's only 10,000 people. Um, when I went to university, I remember the first year, uh, I, I got to know uh, a guy from Algeria. I never met anyone from Algeria. So I went to his like student dorm and he, and he would be like, do you want some pineapple? Like, <laughs> uh, like a real one, like a, a physical <laughs> one or like, and you know, it, for me, I thought it was like an Asian thing. You enter, when you go to like an Asian friend or whatever, they will always be like, do you want some fruits? You know, I thought it was an Asian thing. And this guy, he was, he was gonna cut up like a pineapple for me. And I'm like, no, no, I'm fine. And like, no, no, you don't have to be polite. So he cut it up, peeled it really nicely for me. And you're right, Ali, I think it, the more you step out of your comfort zone, like meeting people from different cultural background, the more, more, tolerant and more accepting and more open you become which makes the world to be honest 0.01 percent better <laughs> i think personally i think it makes it a lot better than that i think the world we live in right now is very divisive especially with media and social media and just you know just news headlines everyone just afraid of everyone else right this is the enemy this is the enemy this is the enemy but in reality you know, we're all people and we have a lot more in common. And, you know, you find that out once you start talking to people and traveling. Traveling's a, like a huge one for me too. I love traveling to different places and seeing different scenes and being in different environments. I'm curious about your traveling, Freddie. You said you, you've worked abroad, which is, <laughs> I've not had to do that. So what is it like working in different countries? It's very interesting, Ali. But yeah. before I answer that question, may I ask you, what's the most interesting country you've been to? Most in interesting country? Well, I guess the United for a country, the United States is a really beautiful country because there's so much going on. Most interesting because New York's different than the South. It's different than Los Angeles. That's different than Seattle. Every every place like upstate New York's different. So that's a really interesting place. Yeah, and. Um, you know, I guess the Middle East is really interesting too. I've been around the Middle East too, and all those different countries are really cool. Uh, it's very different and it's like, you know, it's uh, like everyone understands America from like the movies and stuff and culture, but the Middle East is still some place that your mind's always blown because things are just so new. So yeah, that's my take. Okay, my turn. Uh, <laughs> I think um, what it's like to, to work abroad um, I, I think it helps you become a wiser person and a better person, Ali, because you're forced to adapt to different cultures, different people, different etiquettes. And if you don't, you're going to be an outcast. So it, it helps you 
it helps you become a much more wiser person, a much more flexible person, much more tolerant person, and a much more open person, you know? And I love this by, uh, this quote by Bruce Lee, who's one of my role models. He said that before you can taste my teacup, you know, and my tea, um, you need to empty your glass, you know, and your mug and your cup. And it's so true, you know, I lived four years in China. Um, and uh, if, you, if you're not, if you're not ready to adapt to the way meals are being set up, the ceremony around that, um, the art of sharing, you know, food in China, this small social clues, you know, you're not gonna be very successful in life, not like skip business, like in life, you're gonna have such a hard time, man, you know, there and also living in Spain, you know, there are so many social clues, so many ways you do business here, the way people are, um, if you don't adapt, um, I'm not saying like you should lose yourself, because I think you still should have your own personality and add your own unique flavor, but adapt yourself, it makes you a much more richer person. Wow. Um, what am I, uh, 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 side if you want to go? No, I just wanted to say like, it's, uh, it is like, you guys are talking about traveling this whole time. And, uh, I feel like it's what I've noticed, what I've noticed from people is that the more they travel, the more open-minded they become. And it's something that I constantly remind myself about that. I should also one day, like, if I want to, when I want to raise my kids, I want, I need to take them up you know to see other cultures and see other like history basically in front of them instead of just studying it from a book they need to see things visually so that they can also be open-minded growing up 100 percent, 100 percent. i um i had a um I had someone recently ask me that hey i'm just graduating and what should i be doing and i said how much money do you have i said i have two thousand dollars um i said find a place the furthest furthest away from your home that you can fly to that is so far away from your own culture and go there for as much for as long as you can sort of afford whether that's <laughs> one week two weeks three weeks three months go there just soak in everything you know because you're gonna come back a different person and it's gonna make you grow in ways that you cannot even see the return on the investment you know but you know people are too afraid of the unknown that's why people stay in their comfort zone. Most people, unfortunately. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and in your in your program, when you're taking people in, like, what's the the most interesting case you've had about you know someone really stepping out of their comfort zone to take an internship? I have so many stories, Said. Um, <laughs> I have so many stories. Uh, I can start with one. Um, we had one student from the Midwest in the US. So he explained to me that it comes from um, not even a town. Let's call it a place. Uh, and he said they're all white. <laughs> and uh, there are like 20 families or something like that. And he's never been outside of his own state. I can't recall if it was Indiana or Michigan. It was one of them. Uh, all of them vote for the same party. Uh, all of them go to the same religious place. Um, and he ended up in Beijing. <laughs> Imagine wow. like chaotic, you know, like over 15 million, <laughs> like primarily Chinese, um, primarily speaking Mandarin, um, and eating very, very differently. And in six weeks, the guy changed so much, you know, he became much more, he was like, I wished like people in where I come from could experience this because I've been so uncomfortable here, but I've been so well received and I've been growing so much personally and professionally, but I said, forget about the professionally. Like I've grown like so much as a person, I feel like five years older, you know, and that's just in six weeks. Um, I think that one really touched me because it was a year where, I mean, it was with the, this political thing in the US, but mm -hmm. I, I really, that one touched my heart. Uh, we have another case from, actually from a girl from the UK. Um, can't recall her background, but um, she was black. She came to Shanghai, China, and um, 
one more. So she was interning in a law firm. She was studying law in one of the best schools in the UK. And um, one day, one of my team members, they said, Freddie, um, this girl, she won't come out. She's, uh, she's in, locked in in her room. She's under the bed. Like, under the bed? Yes, under the bed. <laughs> so... So we got to speak to her and then she said, well, you know, everyone is looking at me here. Everyone is staring at me um, and I don't feel comfortable. And we made it, we, we twisted it. We said, okay, but well, have you thought about this way? You're so unique that no one has seen somebody so unique like you. And that's why people are looking at you. Like, oh yeah, you make it such a good point. And that afternoon she went to work and from that sort of became like a shift in her mindset. And it really like gave her a self, self confidence boost. And it really mm -hmm. changed her outlook of herself, you know, because she, she didn't have such a strong self belief, you know? Mm -hmm. So she came back to the UK much stronger as a person because she really stepped out of her comfort zone, you know? Um, right. I think those are, are two quite memorable stories. Yeah, those are some cool stories. And I think um, of the story of the girl, it's like, I think once you showed her like uh, your support and that there is, you know, there are people standing with her and um, maybe that made her a little more confident, you know, it's like she could have just been there and no one would have told her anything and she would have just had a miserable experience but because she knew that people were out there looking for her and like encouraging her. That's just what it is. <laughs> Sometimes that's all it takes. It's just like some like uh, leadership, pretty much, or just um, kindness, and that can really like help a lot of people. That's a great I story. I believe so. I believe yeah. so. I think kindness is completely underrated. I think too many people they see kindness as a weakness, but I definitely see it as like a superpower. Oh wow. <laughs> in the world we live in, I don't know, people, I do hear a lot of people say kindness is a weakness, but uh, I don't, I don't believe <laughs> for a second. I know people call, call me naive sometimes and stuff, but I do think that um, you can, because you have two choices, right? You either act kindly or either you act aggressively or meanly. And what, what kind of person are you going to become um, if exactly. you keep acting mean, right? It's like maybe you'll get some things more of an advantage than a kinder person, but if you're a kind person, that just becomes your character and who you are. That's how people see you, I know. 100%. <laughs> I yeah. mean, what type of person, let's say that you, let's fast forward. Let's say you're 70 years old. What would you tell your 30 or your 25 year old? I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure you would have, yeah. You don't want to say, I wish that was kinder, you know? <laughs> I shouldn't have been that mean to that person. Like, my mom always told me when I did something bad when I was young, like, she would always ask me, like, y y did that make you feel good when you were mean to that boy? Like, and I, I would always be honest, of course. I mean, I hope so, <laughs> at least for me, I don't feel good, you know? I didn't feel good when I was young and I was, like, mean mm -hmm. to somebody else, mm -hmm. you know? And, I mean... I don't, I don't like to go to bed like feeling like bad like that. So I, 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 I choose to believe karma is real, Ch choose to be kind to people and whatever happens, happens in life, you know? Amazing. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit more about how you uh, got it started, the uh, internship, the absolute internships? How did that even start? Uh, yeah, it's, um, so in university, I, um, I was doing an exchange semester in Shanghai and I met a lot of interns. So I was like, hey, what's an internship? Because it was not very popular back in Sweden back then. So these Dutch people, French people are explaining to me that it was like a work experience. You work, some of them got paid, some didn't. You're treated like a normal employee, looks good on your CV, prepares you for life. I'm like, okay, great. The next semester I moved to Japan to do another exchange semester. I loved it. Japan re really, really humbled me, you know, <laughs> uh, and um, I had some classmates from the U.S. were looking for internships, summer internships, and I was like, hey, so, uh, you know, the MSN guy, the Yellow Pages guy, he was still there, but now I was adding <laughs> people on Facebook, you know, Facebook now, guys, <laughs> this was 2007, so... Uh, 
I was like, yeah, I had these friends. They uh, they were doing internships in Shanghai. Let me hook you guys up. And these guys they didn't have such a good time in Shanghai. Not as good as me. And I was like, okay, why? And they were like, yeah, difficult to find accommodation. So we didn't make any friends. That made me realize that what made my experience so good abroad was the community that I built up. And well, as an as an extrovert, it's a little bit easier, right?、Um, and I didn't think about it much more. I graduated and I moved to Thailand because, again, love to travel. I wanted to to live abroad, right? And、uh, I was applying to hundreds of jobs. I'm I'm not kidding. I I looked through my Gmail inbox the other day. I think I applied to over 400 jobs. Wow. <laughs>、um, and、uh, nothing. Nothing. So I was like, okay,、um, let's find you know something to do. I love soccer, football. So when I grew up,、uh, we couldn't afford to buy football jerseys, like soccer jerseys, you know. So I was making these connections with the factories in Thailand because that's where Adidas and Nike are, were producing. I don't know if they're producing there still, but anyway, so I was buying them really cheap and I was selling them on eBay. So I was making <laughs> like a, an amazing income. I think it was like four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars, whooping four hundred dollars per month. <laughs> Uh, which basically paid the, the the food and a little bit of entertainment every month,、um, and、uh, one weekend、uh, while watching Sopranos because I was going through the Sopranos series, loved that.、Uh, I was like, "Hey, let's look at, look up summer internships again," you know, because I was thinking about some business ideas, and I found this company in the U.S. and we're selling、uh, internships in New York City for eight weeks. It was ten thousand dollars. And they had like three, four hundred students, and I was like, "This is a business." Wow! So that's fine. Yes, <laughs> that is that is wild. <laughs> so I was like, "Okay,、um, we should do this in China. Like, people、right. should go to China. I mean, that's where you need help, not in the U.S. I mean, people speak English in the U.S. You know, and we could do this for like three times cheaper." So I、uh, I bought the four hour work week which just came out. I don't know if you guys have read it, but amazing, yes,、it. of course. <laughs> it it yes. really changed my life. So、wow. um, I read it, and I was like, I'm gonna create a business that is allows me to be anywhere in the world, and this could be it, you know. So. We started with a program in Shanghai and and Hong Kong. I think the first program had three students.、Um, at the first two years, it was really rough. You know, we didn't get a lot of. I think the biggest group we had was twenty,、uh, and that's what I thought that was the tipping point. You know, like because my dream was to get four hundred students, like that company in the U.S. So fast forward now, it's been twelve years.、Um, I remember when we started. Um, we reached out to universities. We wanted to do a little bit of marketing and advertisement.、Uh, people were laughing at us. They didn't like can ba- come back to us when you guys are a little bit more legitimate.、Um, <laughs> and today, like we work with over sixty universities in the world. You know, I mean, like I'm talking about the top, top, top level, like the UC Berkeley's, the UPenn, like really heavyweights. You know, and I'm really proud of of the journey we made. And、um, I think it's all about doing good, you know. I think、yeah. it's all about doing good. I remember there was one of my mentors. This was five, six years ago, because I remember one of our competitors was doing what I call like a, a kick in the nuts, you know, like something that hey, this is like not good business etiquette. And he told me something good. He was like, because this guy, he, he's like, he was fifty-five or something. I think he's almost sixty now. Big, big like business mogul. I'm talking about. He's been doing business with Carlos Slim, like heavyweights, <laughs> you know, heavyweights. And he was like, "Freddie, you know what? The good will always stand tall, and they will always win." I was like, "Okay, it's a very, very difficult medicine, like pill to take today, but I'll really take that to heart." And it's been one of my like mantras, you know, so far.、Oh, wow. By the way, you mentioned like your your mentor. And、uh, I'm, I'm currently I'm currently the, listening to the audio book for、uh, Poor Dad Rich Dad, and they mention also about the concept of having a good mentor. Like, how important was 
how, how important is that mentor in your life for you to become successful? Like, what is the importance in your opinion? Extremely, extremely important. And let me explain to you why. Um, when you don't have any experience, when, you know, when you're young, you're looking for people to look up to. I mean, that's the way we are. That's why we look up to celebrities. We look up to people on Instagram. That's why we look up to our parents, you know. And I remember something that my mom, she told me is that we don't have anything. You know, I'll teach you the manners, you know, the wisdom that you need, you know, to carry yourself forward in life. But the business aspect, you need to be finding people. You need to look for them. They are not going to come to you. You will need to look for them and you will ask questions and you will remember those answers. Then you apply to your life. It's as easy as that. Um, and the mentors that I've come across said has been natural. I know today you can go online, you can look for one and you can pay for one, which I think is ridiculous. I think it's really <laughs> ridiculous because no one is going to generally know you, you know, and then be like, OK, oh, yeah, and that's going to be two thousand pounds or two thousand dollars. You know, it has to come natural and um, mentors can be in anywhere in life. You can find them anywhere. Um, I don't know if you've read The Alchemist. I'm a big reader, no. but The Alchemist is... Uh, I, I love that book. Um, there's a concept in Arabic that is called Maktub, which is basically gold nuggets in life. Things that you don't really, maybe not, might not pay attention to, you know. But the way I met this man, for example, I'll tell you the story so it makes more sense to you, is that you know, you remember MSN, Yellow Pages, Facebook, right? Now LinkedIn was there. So <laughs> use LinkedIn, like bombing people. I'm talking about bombing, like, because for me, it was every no gets me closer to a yes. You know, Mark Cuban, in my mind, every day, I would add 100 to 200 people. Like, I would be like, I'll add people until they block me, you know? <laughs> so, but I was genuine about it because we wanted to grow a business. We needed more host companies to partner with us to host our students. And there was this woman, she owned a private equity firm, a finance firm uh, in Hong Kong. And uh, again, I'm genuine, I'm kind, I'm interested in people. I'm not political in any way. When I meet people, I'm very genuine. So we went for tea um, and we spoke and we spoke. And uh, she said, you know what? Uh, I, I really like you guys. Uh, I know this man. I would love to introduce you to him. I'm sure he might be interested in interns. That's how I met him. Oh, wow. Um, she introduced him and we met. And, and this man, you know, again, Maktoub, right? Gold nugget. Because I was good. I was kind. I got something, right? Um, and we ended up having a relationship. Every time I went to Hong Kong, I would be like, hey, do you have, uh, I would love to meet up, uh, maybe help you with some interns or, or just have a, a coffee chat or whatever. And that turned into a student slash mentor, mentor relationship, um, so to speak. Oh, wow. There you go. Gold nugget story. <laughs> Absolutely. Something I want Something I wanted to know more about is like, because you mentioned that you've, in the beginning, it was hard to be considered legitimate, obviously, when you first started the program, because I mean, uh, when you're first, when you're a startup, not everyone's going to give you the respect that you like that you deserve because you're still new. And like, what were the challenges that you had to be for you to be able to become, you know, to to work with like UPenn and UC Berkeley? And, and other universities such as those? Legitimacy. Legitimacy and reputation. And I'll tell you why. Because it takes, Warren Buffett said it the best. I didn't, I didn't make this up, but mm -hmm. it takes 20 years to build up a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. And I love that. But when you start off, you don't have anything. You just have your mouth, you know, and anyone can speak. But you need to show with your actions, you know. So when you start, you have nothing, you know. So when we started, we didn't have any previous students. We didn't have any pictures. We didn't have, basically, we're selling a promise that 
who knew like who knows that we who knew if we could source good internships you know who knew so you need to be ready to put in the time and i think a lot of people a lot of entrepreneurs today they are not willing to put down the time they're not willing to live humble enough to make something successful um let me give you an example two years in one and a half something like that in our journey we couldn't our expenses were too high and i said uh i said hey we need i need to live it i need to move into my mother-in-law because i need to live rent free for a year can you imagine the type of ego you need to have or the little ego that you need to have in order to say that that i'm me i want to move in to a little like student bed and i'm gonna live with my mother-in-law for a year because i can eat for free and i have free wi-fi and i can operate the business from there and whenever we are bigger we can get our own place i think a lot of people today they they look on on instagram social media whatever that is and they're like oh ferraris you know nice yeah. suits <laughs> and yeah man they, they haven't eaten the pasta tomato sauce for years they haven't eaten the noodles they haven't had mm -hmm. the one pound you know i'm a i'm a big coffee guy you know say they haven't had the one pound tesco coffee you know the the instant one for years man that was my coffee so and i was you know when i lived in in london and i was touring with our when we had our london office I wouldn't even buy coffee on the train or whatever before touring because it was too expensive. I would wait until the fair or whatever because it was unlimited coffee, you know? Like people <laughs> are not willing to live humble enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely second that. And for some reason, like, you know, people think being humble, I know, is not good or not attractive or not social media status, you know? I love working on, I'll give you an example. I love working on film sets, for example, and I love um i love eating noodles as you said the one dollar two dollar noodles i think it's a great meal for my lunch i would eat it and, but yeah i you know i once heard like this one guy complain he's like when are we gonna have real food we're gonna take us out for lunch to dinner <laughs> and i was like this is dinner <laughs> this is the noodles you know this is as, as good as it gets why do you why are you asking for more just <laughs> enjoy it <laughs> pretty much so just it's that kind of mentality no offense to whoever that guy was or whatever but it's like uh, it's, um, yeah, I think people care too much about like all the fancy things and they don't like realize that it's literally all the same. <laughs> you know, once you get the materialism out of your head, it's just enjoying what's there. So, yeah, it's true. hundred percent. I actually had noodles last night. I love noodles. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. <laughs> They're so good. <laughs> So, so you guys are getting me like a craving now for noodles now i already it. have some sauce you know for it and i i just want to make some noodles now um, they're 100 percent <laughs> underrated <laughs> yeah i want to i'm not asking before because we are wrapping out the time here i do want to ask what do you think on the other hand a good like company should offer to interns to incentivize them to um you know like if we were to start looking for interns for example what could we do to set it up to make it um, so that interns would want to work for us, for example. I think one thing that com because there are so many companies, right? A thousand right. companies run over millions, uh, equal amount of students. Um, I think what companies can improve on is being very clear on what the student will get out of it. Mm -hmm. Let's say you were a student, right? You you find this like job advert or internship offer. You'd be like, "Hey, I see the tasks, but what what would I get out of it?" And because people are selfish, they always ask, "What can I get out of it?" You feed that, like, "Okay, this is what you will do. This is what you will get out of it. This is what you will learn. Apply right here." I think that's that's one way companies can can stand out. We are still doing that for full our full time uh, offers, and people love it because they can be clear on what they will get. You know, like their expectations are clear. Mm -hmm. Wow! All right, that's a great one. And what are your thoughts on like online internships as opposed to being in person working in a company or something like that? It's amazing. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> I just gave it. I just gave a TED talk about that. Oh, wow. um, 
I'll tell you why it's amazing. It opens up to opportunities to students that otherwise wouldn't be able to commute, travel, um, or, or do an internship in person. Um, and it saves so much on commute time. Um, and it really opens up the door to the world. So you can sit like in the suburbs of LA, suburbs of London, and you can be interning for a company, an organization in Cape Town, South Africa. Mm -hmm. or, in, in, or in the same town or in the same country for that matter, you know? Um, I think it has endless of opportunities. And um, also another thing is that it removes the cost factor. So a, a lot of people have been saying, well, it's so expensive to travel. Like, I wish I could do this internship in Australia, but you don't have, to, it doesn't have to cost you anything. You don't have to travel. You don't have to apply for the visa. Forget about COVID. You can sit in your dorm room and intern for a company in Australia. And you know what? That will prepare you much better for the future because what the employers are looking for in five years, you know, 20, 27 what they're going to be looking for is cultural awareness flexibility 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 they want somebody who knows how to work remotely whether that's from a train station or from home or from an <laughs> office they want somebody who's agile you know mm -hmm. um and that's that's you, you can have a handicap like you can be sitting in a real wheelchair and be obtaining the same experience that before was not possible you know wow. uh, you could have any other handicap or it could be visa restriction like i don't know you might be from a certain country like mm -hmm. okay uh, unable to come into australia but you know what now you can enter for that company wow for a company in that country so and also for companies guys have you thought about it like you could have like 10 interns from the uk now like building up a, working on a project for you that is beneficial for them and their skill setting and their building their skill stacking and it could be beneficial for you as an organization but also you as a manager you know becoming a better manager so to speak so and at the same time you make friends with 10 new people that you wouldn't otherwise meet so wow no that's definitely a great take i thought it would be the you know it is a little controversial, right? Because you do want to work in a place. And that's how I traditionally had my internships, you know, like working in a place. But um, I do see a huge value, especially like the way we're doing it right now. We can connect to anyone around the world. And it's truly uh, um, amazing, honestly. Um, Rodrigue, thank you so much for what you're doing. <laughs> I think internships are hugely important. I benefited from them a lot. and um good luck with your i hope you get your black belt <laughs> and um good luck with your uh, company and everything thank you so much for coming on the show appreciate your time thank you very much guys a lot of gratitude thank, thank you, for you. Me. is there uh, anything you'd like to shout out or let the world know before we wrap up here i think be kind be tolerant um show a lot of love and uh, if you resonate with me check out my podcast fika with rice where i interview a lot of successful people from all around the world um, fika if you don't know uh, is something that we do in sweden and rice my cambodian background funny uh check me out on instagram freddy van hun <laughs> linkedin connect with me i do a lot of funny and memorable videos on tiktok as well so happy to connect with with, with all of you thank you guys Thank you, man. And have a great day. See you guys. Adios. Woo!